Okay, we're, we're live. Okay. Hey guys, I'm Nate, uh, physical therapist at Fit Muscle and Joint Clinic. And I'm with you today with Dennis Cook, who is a nutritional health coach for Natural Grocers. So Dennis has an extensive background in fitness and nutrition, um, starting back in 2009 when he served as a mental health technician for the U.S. Air Force until 2014. And then he continued on uh, when he completed a graduate certificate in sports nutrition from Concordia University in Chicago. Uh, he has experience as a CrossFit trainer, is also a certified strength and conditioning coach, uh, being well versed in all things functional fitness related. Um, he's an athlete himself and lives his knowledge out to maximize his own performance and recovery when he's crushing things like marathons, Ironmans, CrossFit workouts, and um, he enjoys helping others do the same. So, Dennis, thank you so much for your time and for being with us today. Um, and I'm going to let you just give us a little bit of a kind of well-rounded introduction to yourself and your perspective and then um, the topics that we're going to be talking about today. Sure. Thank you, by the way. I think that's the best introduction I've ever had in my life. Uh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, pretty awesome. But yeah, I mean, you you said it. Um, I got my start in coaching uh, back in 2009, working as a mental health tech for the Air Force. Um, and that journey where it, it started, you know, I came to, so I was assisting psychologists and social workers um, at Hanscom Air Force Base. And my role was really the front end to try and, and empower people to not even need to come see us, right? We're trying to create resiliency with the troops. And what I found was the conversation just kept coming back to uh, fitness and nutrition. And so the, the folks who, and, and we screened everybody. That was one of my jobs was to screen folks um, before they headed off for deployment and when they came back. And just in my own observations, uh, the, the people who were the most resilient were the ones who had a really um, dedicated fitness regimen and who at least had some sort of intentional nutrition, right? And basically the people who are they were doing the things um, and that kind of started my journey down this road of identifying how important exercising and eating well was um, i being like you know typical kind of jock really went for the fitness stuff first and at that time i was doing like you said i, I was running some marathons i got into iron man training um but it also just so happened that our deputy commander on base was really into CrossFit. I, I had learned about CrossFit um, in 2009 from a friend who was going into special ops and he kind of introduced me to it, but I hadn't really done it much. I just messed around. And But I was working as the phys one of the physical training leaders for our squadron and the deputy commander basically rounded up all the physical training later leaders on base and said, hey, you all have to do this um, weekend course. And he brought on the whole level, well, not the whole level one staff, but he brought on uh, level one staff onto base and basically made us become uh, certified level one CrossFit trainers. Um, and it kind of just went from there. Uh, my wife and I ended up going to Okinawa, Japan, and they had a like a CrossFit box there on base. And I was training some of the, a lot of the active duty troops and a lot of the families um, and long story short, you know, here I am, um, and that journey just kept continuing. I kept building. I uh, did the certification, the strength and conditioning certification with NSCA, and then I did that graduate certificate in sports nutrition with Concordia. Um, and now here I am at Natural Grocers, and it, it's just it's awesome because Natural Grocers vision totally aligns with my personal vision and that's empowering the community um, to uh, have the right information and be able to make the best decisions for themselves for their health um, and so a quick little history on natural grocers we're actually having our 65th anniversary coming up so um, for those who are watching August 13th through the 15th, you can come in and get crazy deals like 50% off 
I'm sure we'll be talking about like meat and eggs today, get a lot of good deals on that. Um, but it started with just a couple, Margaret and Philip Isley, and they were in Golden, Colorado. And, you know, they their mission, they literally were just going around in the community providing nutrition counseling and helping people understand what, you know, a whole foods diet and some supplements would do for you. And they were providing free nutrition education and then they would take orders um, and go out and get this healthy foods and bring it to the folks in the community. And so nutrition education, my role as the health coach here, that's been with natural grocers since day one. It was built on, you know, empowering the community with nutrition education. So that's why I'm here today. And, and you know, times are weird right now, so we can't have classes Unfortunately, we do have a classroom in the store and we often go out and do um, education presentations. So here we are. I think this is like the, the next best thing. Uh, so hopefully we can provide some good info today. That was Absolutely. kind of a Yeah, uh, but I think what we're going to talk about, I think we agree, was basically eating for performance and recovery. Um, and I've got a couple basically favorite nutrients uh, that that I would have everybody do, um, namely protein, calcium, vitamin D, and omega-3s. So I don't know if, if we want to jump right into that or if you have any thoughts. Like, what are some common things you see in your practice? I, yeah, I think um, probably the, one of the biggest things that people don't tend to realize, especially if they're in pain or they're recovering from an injury, or maybe even particularly like having had a surgery and they're on that rehab journey after that, is just how much of a role things like sleep and hydration and nutrition, which is, you know, the focus of the discussion today, play a part in that. So, you know, you could be having the best physical therapy, the best rehab uh, available out there to get. Um, you know, the best plan, the best surgeon, the best team around you. And if you're not getting that component for yourself uh, to maximize, you know, your the process is going on in your body to support that, then it's not going to be the ideal outcome that we, that we want to try to strive for with, for with every um, person that walks through our doors. You know, it could be something minor like a knee pain, you know, inflamed Achilles tendon, um, something like that is repetitive overuse and strain from a sport ranging all the way uh, to like, you know, like we said already, a full blown injury that maybe ended up needing a surgical repair. Um, so I, I, you know, I try to have that discussion with my patients um, as often as possible, um, you know, in the given time frames with them and things like that. But sometimes it's nice to really have a resource like you, Dennis, to kind of hit that home um, and kind of keep planting that thought in people's mind so that they realize like, okay, yeah, I really want to like make the most of my time here. I want to make the most of my recovery, um, you know, and my investment in my health and my well-being for the long run. So that maybe like these little re repetitive overuse strains from sports or from running or working out in the gym or things like that, maybe they won't happen as often. You know, we have pretty good data that supports, you know, if you eat certain nutrients um, and the source of the nutrients, like you're going to kind of speak more to today, um, that that affects uh, your your body's kind of systemic inflammatory levels, um, and that's going to affect your recovery. That's going to affect your pain levels. Uh, that's a that's a huge pain is a huge uh, phenomenon. We're not going to really get into necessarily today, but it is affected by your nutrition for sure. And right. you know, if a lot of the people that come in just walk off the street or internet Google hear about us or referred here. You know, they want to get out of pain, and that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. But there's there's a lot to that process. So. Yeah, I'm pumped to hear uh, what you're going to speak about here, Dennis, and to kind of learn from you and have some good takeaways I can talk about um, with my patients and my clients as well. Sure. Yeah. And I think you and I probably have a lot of the same conversations. Um, you know, maybe you're dealing with folks after surgery and I'm dealing with folks, you know, after workouts, um, but it's still recovering from tissue damage. Right. And, uh, you know, when people are talking to me about exercise and maybe not reaching their goals or, or whatever's going on, it's like, hey, you know, this is a stress. This is a stimulus. But if you don't do the recovery, which is 
all these things in the rest of the day, then you're just doing damage, right? And then so with um, like surgeries and that type of repair, uh, it's probably also good for people to understand like there's kind of a short window for optimal repair. And you'd be the expert on this um, where you really want to do those things well to get the best possible recovery. Um, and, and so for recovery, what it means to me is both both post-workout and post-injury. And then, you know, talking about performance, we want to be able to do what we love at our peak potential. So if we're not taking care of the recovery thing, we're not going to get that peak potential. Um, and so, and I want to leave with this. So my, one of my mentors has a saying, stepping over dollars to get to pennies. And so it's really common for people to come and be like, what's like the best pre-workout I can get? Cause you know, I want to be like <laughs> awesome in the gym and I'm like, okay, well first, like, tell me about your diet, you know, uh, what do you eat? And usually it, it's kind of, I could tell that they're not even very mindful. I'm not picking on everybody. A lot of people are, but not even very mindful of what they're eating. And when I dig a little deeper, I find most people aren't eating enough protein. Um, and I'll, most people aren't getting enough vitamin D. I think calcium, we're going to talk about is critical. I think that one's probably okay. But again, there, if I say how much calcium you're getting, most people aren't mindful and intentional about that. And then definitely systemically in America, we're not getting enough omega-3s. And that a part of that is because of just the standard American diet. Um, so it, probably, I guess we'll just talk about these one at a time. I, I would say protein would be number one. If, if somebody is going to take something away from today, it, it should be about protein. I know it's like the total bro thing to talk about, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is that important, right? So protein, you know, there's only three macronutrients. You have protein, carbs, and fats, and protein is the nutrient that's going to build and repair those tissues. The other nutrients aren't going to do that for you. So especially if you have an injury, your need for protein, if you want to have a quality recovery, is critical. Um, I gen I'll lead with my practical recommendation. My practical recommendation is 0.75 to 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if I weigh 200 pounds, I should be eating up to 200 grams of protein and when i tell most people about that and they kind of like do the math on how much that is um you know it's probably like over a pound of beef uh, yeah. <laughs> uh you know kind of like mind mind explodes right and like and now we're, remember we're talking about recovery from injury and from intense workout you can have you know, 50, 60 grams of protein and survive and be f just fine. Um, but when we're talking about optimizing, those needs go up really high. Um, and so stop me at any point, by the way, because I, I, I'll yeah. just keep going on this. Um, you, I, you, had I, me on, you had me on protein. I'm over here just sipping a protein shake. I'm excited now. I'm ready to get yeah. it. <laughs> uh, I think so. I think one of the things that you we mentioned we talked a little bit ahead of time um that would be useful for people is like is it probably a pretty common issue is people can't conceive of how to intake that much protein yeah I, I think um that's where in my experience has been a barrier for people too because you know that you you give them that let's just say you know 160 pound person and even if they want to get like that lower limit of the point protein, you know, more toward that 0 0.7, 0 0.75 grams per pound of body weight, you know, they're looking at probably like 120 for their for their floor to try to threshold to try to reach. And they're just like, well, I can't do that. But, you know, you kind of walk through with them. It's like, well, even if you only eat three meals a day and then maybe like one, you know, protein focused snack in your day, which should really be totally reasonable to achieve you break it down and it just becomes a lot more realistic for people. So 
yeah, what are what are some of the strategies you kind of walk people through to do that and maybe even um, your recommended sources for meal focused and even snack as well? Yeah. Um, so obviously you can count and you can plug every meal into, you know, my fitness pal or chronometer or one of those. Um, and that'll be like, I guess the best or the most sound way. Um, but I find that that's also a big hurdle for people. And you start talking about, okay, you gotta like, and then, you know, the eyes kind of glaze over. It's like, I don't want to do that. Right. So there's a pretty decent eyeball method. Um, that we use here at Natural Grocers. And so I'll give a couple tips. So first tip would be protein with every meal, because obviously it is a lot of protein. Um, but if we chip away at it throughout the day, you're very likely to be successful. Um, and a point on that is having protein with every meal is going to help you have less inflammation. Um, because of the way your body processes carbs. And we can kind of dig into that, but protein is gonna kind of help uh, slow, balance that process out. Um, protein with every meal. And then when we're, when we're looking at how much, the easiest way is just to do a palm sized portion, right? So I got, you know, that's a pretty decent little hamburger <laughs> or steak right there. That's good news for guys. Like if you're eating beef, like take a look at your palm, that's not nothing, right? So. Um, to me, that's exciting because it means I get to eat a lot. <laughs> that's, you know, when somebody's telling me, I want you to eat a lot of food, you're going to do awesome. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, <laughs> so, you know, in the morning, you, you may want to start with eggs. I think eggs are one of the honest. So eggs, you know, I, I learned this in my study of nutrition. Eggs is like the, the gold standard. It's like the the protein that everything else is measured against, right? So when they're looking, uh, there's like a protein rating scale or whatever, I forget what it's called, but the egg is it, that's the standard. And it's cause it has like a, you know, perfect amino profile. It's whatever it, it is thing. And by the way, uh, National Grocers has the highest egg standard in all of, all of grocery stores that I'm aware of. Um, nice. And, yeah, we could talk about that a little bit, um, but if you if anybody really wants to take a look at that, I would recommend getting on the website. Our, our website itself is very educational. It's just naturalgrocers.com. And we, we literally have like a gold bronze or gold silver bronze ranking system with our bronze being our minimal threshold. And that's typically a higher standard than you will find in any other grocery store. Uh, just to give an example, like at, at a minimum, we're 100% free range. Um, the hens are never caged. They must spend outside in the dirt and grass uh, with bugs and worms and all that. And, you know, there's zero antibiotics fed to them, zero animal byproducts, zero growth, uh, growth promoters or hormones. Uh, so really clean eggs. So, yeah, so that I would recommend that with breakfast. Um, Bacon can also be very helpful. And then now the, we're getting serious here. Yeah, it just depends. You know, now we start talking about uh, if you're counting fats and all that. But um, eggs and bacon is a great way to start. And then I love, you know, beef. I, I, I find that um, if you just do beef patties, so uh, like hamburgers or even just ground beef, you can kind of do little stir fries and mix in lots of vegetables. Um, nuts or whatever and have a quick easy delicious meal um and so like i said a palm sized portion it's a decent filling amount but it's also not that overwhelming when you're thinking about beef so three times a day and then um you know like you said a protein snack so something like turkey jerky or beef jerky or even again hard boiled e hard boiled eggs are like the the easiest hack in the world like we dollar ninety nine eggs, guys. Dollar ninety nine eggs. We got going <laughs> on for Empower. Like buy. Where else are you? Either the jerky itself is going to be way more than that. So you know, buy a dozen eggs, boil them all up, and put them in a Tupperware, and you know, take them with you. Have a few for breakfast, and just grab and go throughout the day. It's super easy to get to your protein, 
if you've got some eggs to reach for, if you if you're getting you know uh, that ground beef into your diet, and then I guess the last thing would be most people will find that they they probably want to shake at at some point to supplement that, and then so you know my recommendation would be a whey protein shake. Um, there's a lot of other great options out there, and that would be something that we would just have to probably talk about in the one-on-one -on -one setting. So I do one-on-one -on -one coaching here um, to find the best protein source that your your stomach can essentially tolerate. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I, I do, but I do want to hit it on. It's like quality matters, right? And this is something that really since I started here at Natural Grocers. Um, it's really become evident to me. So let's take the beef, for example. Um, when we're And this is really important when we're talking about inflammation. So commercial beef, what those animals eat is essentially corn and grains compared to um, naturally raised beef, which is one of our quality standards. So for us, um, yeah, the the cows essentially have to live like cows. They have to be free to graze and eat grass um, and a bunch of other things as well. But the difference in the fatty acid profile between those two cows, a naturally raised cow and a commercially raised cow, is very significant. Uh, when we're looking at the omega-3s, which we're going to talk about, we're talking about a cow that has like five times the amount of omega-3s in their fatty acid profile when they're naturally raised compared to when they're commercially raised. Um, and so when we, when we get into the fish oil, what we're going to learn is that in the standard American diet, so we're talking about um, lots of grains, lots of pr processed foods, um, and even just all, even when we're eating good foods that, that are commercially raised, what's happening is we've got a ratio. I'm sorry if I'm losing, if you think I'm losing the audience, let me know. But basically in our body, we, we use omegas, right? So we use omega-3s, omega-6 are the two big ones. And they're a part of the inflammatory process. And these two molecules, um, nutrients, they compete in the in the inflammation process in the american diet we're getting about 20 omega-6s to one omega-3 but when we look at our ancestors like 10,000 years ago it was more like one to one or two to one and when we have enough omega-3s in our diet we have a much more balanced and sort of dampened or healthy immune response. So those we're getting the we have more omega sixes, they're winning that competition and we're having an exaggerated immune response. And that's where some of that like um, pain might come from or sort of systemic inflammation that we see going on um, throughout society. And so really quality does matter. And that's not even getting into like gut health and talking about commercially raised with the antibiotics and the GMOs and all that and what it does to the, the gut flora and, and leaky gut and all that, which all also leads to inflammation. We start getting um, these food particles outside of the gut lining and all that. So, I mean, there's really a lot to dig into. Um, I think it's pretty commonplace in the fitness industry to say, Quality doesn't matter. It's just about counting calories, counting macros, and just like get it. But that's, mm -hmm. I think that's coming from a place of convenience because now you have to have a separate conversation with your clients about um, where to get quality food, you know, where to get affordable quality food. Um, and, and we don't want to overwhelm people. And, and so somebody, probably right. people are going to be listening to me right now already overwhelmed. So I apologize. Um, I want to keep it as simple as possible. And I guess, yeah, quality does matter would be the thing that you need to have heard in all of that.
And I think, yeah, and I think too, Dennis, you know, if you bring up a good point because we're, again, we're trying to talk about what is optimal for people. So for the people who really do kind of want to achieve that or even just some sort of level of um, a higher quality of life, just feeling better, um, digestion goes easier, you know, their mood and energy levels are better, more consistent through the day, you know, let, let alone even talking about managing pain response in your body and recovery and performance, you know, just just life itself, you know, when we're exhausted, you put in a, you know, 10 hour day, whatnot, you're sleeping five, seven, six, seven hours a night, you know, all of it, all that to say is, sure, we're talking optimal, but you also just got to start somewhere, you know, so on so, all the things we're talking about, you know, today, um, you know, the four kind of categories that you're walking us through here, um, you're just thinking like, maybe just choose one of those things to focus on, you know, the next 30 days. Um, you know, stages, stages of recovery and getting, getting tissue to truly heal in the body. Like you, if you have a muscle strain, um, depending on the grade of the muscle strain, you know, that may take anywhere from six to 12 weeks. And I tell people that's getting consistent treatment here. That's actually doing the rehab. That's doing the exercises. That's modifying your activities and your load and your workout volume. So same thing, you know, when it comes to nutrition, it's like, you don't do it all at once. It's, it's a, it's a process, but at the end of the day, you, you just have to kind of decide what it is worth to you um, and, you know, and making whatever level of that you can achieve a priority and realizing that there are great resources, um, you know, such as yourself to get you to that point that you want to be in. You know, it's not a it's not going to be an overnight change. Um, and I'm, I'm really interested, too, about, you know, you kind of mentioned like the fatty acid profile and things like that. If you mm. if you don't mind taking like a little bit of a segue to the omega three. Sure. Uh, topic and even like your dosing on that. Then maybe we can roll back to calcium or yeah. vitamin D, however you want to. Sure. Um, yeah. So even if we're just like eating all organic grass fed beef and we're eating the free range uh, chicken eggs, like most likely most of us are still getting processed foods into our diet. Probably, probably a little bit more sugar than we want and that we want to admit to probably a little bit more chips than we want to admit to. Um, and so, you know, the, there's, especially in like the chips, like things with labels, uh, when you when you look at the label and it says sunflower oil, canola oil or whatever, these are um, like what we call damaged fats. They're highly processed. And that's what's gonna overload us with those omega-6s. Um, and so, when we're talking about supplementing the one right off the bat, especially if we're trying to, you know, recover better and have less inflammation is going to be omega three. And so my pick is cod liver oil. We have one here. It's uh, lemon. Oh, what's the flavor? Lemon mint. And I, I do it by the teaspoon. Oh. The actual oil. I don't think it actually even tastes bad. Like I've got to, I was using a water chaser at first, but <laughs> I like it. Um, and I, I like this. You oh, kind of okay. deferred eye contact there for a second when you said you liked it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure we can all trust you. <laughs> um, no, you can trust me. And, and the reason I like the oil itself uh, as opposed to like You're a capsule. Still there, Dennis? Yeah, I'm still here. Um, you kind of froze a bit. Uh, I'll keep rolling, see if you come back. Uh, the reason I like the oil itself um, as opposed to capsule is that i can give it a whiff and know that it's fresh okay let's see sorry to anybody who's watching it looks like we have nate paused a bit here i'm gonna keep going and, ho and hope that he comes back but here's what basically you need to know about the omega-3s um they're rich in EPA and DHA, which are fatty acids that are abundant in your brain. And like I said, they're omega-3s, so they're gonna help with that healthy inflammatory process. Um, and the typical place to supplement with these is gonna be fish oil or cod liver oil. Um, you may have heard of flax oil for this purpose, but here's my caution on flax oil is that because it's um i think i, hey, I, think I, just, I lost you there 
I just, sorry. I just kept talking because I figured Good. you'd come that's, back. That's um, great. I'm back yeah, on. So, Keep it rolling. <laughs> yeah, so where I was at, you know, I, I basically said, explain that with omega-3s um, you're typically going to see people supplementing with fish oil or cod liver oil. Um, flax oil is one of the common options that vegetarians and vegans go for but my sort of disclaimer on this is excuse me flax oil is ALA so there's DHA, EPA, and ALA they're the omega-3s. DHA and EPA are abundant in your brain and they're kind of like the, the two prolific ones that we're looking at for that healthy inf inflammatory process. When we consume ALA, the, the idea is that it can be converted into the EPA DHA, but it's what we're finding is not converted so well. So if you're a vegan or vegetarian, we actually have some good um, algae options, some uh, like see i guess vegetable <laughs> yeah. sorry i'm such a meat eater i can't even speak like <laughs> like sea vegetables um yeah but out and so you can get the epa and you get the dha uh, from the algae the dha and so that would be like my um vegetarian pick but yeah i mean i i pretty much pretty much said it is just like it's that it's that balance between the omega threes and omega sixes that we're going for. And what we're finding is just, um, the balance isn't there in the, in the American diet. So we want to supplement and supplementing is really easy. I mean, uh, usually just follow what's on the label, but it's typically like a teaspoon a day. Um, I may have lost to, but the reason I said that I can go for the oil is just because I, I, I can smell right there that it's fresh. So it is possible that when you're buying the, the, the gel caps or whatever, that they can oxidize and become rancid and you wouldn't really know it unless you're popping them open and smelling them. Um, I don't know how common that is, but if it does happen, it's actually ha kind of has the reverse effect that you're going for. And so I think if you can find like a lemon one that you don't mind the taste you pretty much getting like quality assurance on that um and so it's just it's a it's a very simple kind of behavioral hack for lack of a better term that you can add in it's just um you know a teaspoon of medicine right in the morning yeah. and, and you're just that much better off well uh, we'll see if we can get as hardcore as you are dennis and just straight up down the down the teaspoon you Maybe can start do it. smoothie, smoothie everyone, you know, if you need to. Just don't feel ashamed. Yeah, you could do it and then just chase it with some raw eggs and, and then <laughs> hockey music. And there we I I grew up in Philadelphia, by the way. Um, and so you know, I've run those stairs many times. And I will tell you, at it doesn't matter what day of the year, what hour it is. If you go to the art museum stairs, there's always somebody running up and going to the top and doing it. It's just guaranteed so that's awesome. ever visit philly and want to see that you will see it just <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i mean pretty simple um thoughts on omega-3 the other one is so simple and and it's crazy that this is an issue is the vitamin d right so yeah. there's like evidence out there there's past studies where um, like 60% of Caucasians and 90% of African Americans have insufficient vitamin D levels. And there's a difference between being, um, what's the word I'm trying to say, um, like severely lacking and just having insufficient or non optimal vitamin D levels. Right. Um, but when, when we're talking about vitamin D, First of all, it's free. Like you can get it from the sunshine, especially this time of year. Um, but yeah, so because we're, we're inside so much more nowadays, uh, we have a bit of an aversion to sunlight. We lather up with a sunscreen, um, and then of course, you know, we, we live. We're not so close to the equator. Um, it does actually become a challenge. This is some of the reasons why we're not getting optimal levels of vitamin D. So you can take vitamin D orally. Um, 
a lot of physicians now are recommending up to 5,000 IUs. And all you need to know is basically that number. And we sell, you know, a lot of supplements that range from 400 IUs up to 10,000 IUs. I don't, I don't know who's recommending 10,000, but I'm sure there's, you know, I've, I've seen people come in and say, oh, my doctor recommended this much. That's not the, this is the USDA, uh, I think upper tolerable limit or whatever their thing is. I think it's 4,000 IUs is, is yeah. the recommendation, like the official sort of American standard. Um, it's, yeah, it's there. I mean, the, the supplements are so cheap and the pill is tiny. Yeah, I mean, it's so easy to just just do that and know that you're yeah, you're you can covering just your bases. With your cod there. liver oil. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think you just lost a few participants there, Dennis. You got to get off the cod liver train there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, you're right. So, but here's, okay, so here's my fun facts about vitamin D and just to kind of hit home on how important it is. Every cell in your body has a vitamin D receptor and vitamin D plays a, a part on over a thousand genes in your body. So um, there's this idea of epigenetics where, you know, our external environment plays a role in how our genes express themselves. And so when we're getting optimal levels of vitamin D, we're talking about a thousand genes. We're talking about, you know, all the different systems in your body, um, cardiovascular, immune system, neuro, uh, you name it, right? All the systems. Yeah. And, you know, it's the difference between turning on a gene for health or, you know, turning off a gene, gene towards sickness. And so that's kind of simplifying it, but it is like that because you know our body is designed to survive so when we don't have enough of something it's always going to go into survival mode and so when we have abundance that's when we can get to thriving and optimal that's what we're talking about abundance of protein right if we don't get enough protein your body's going to carry out the functions you know where it's going to get that protein from your own muscle tissues right so yeah you your knee, your body's going to find a way to heal your knee or whatever your injury was, but it's going to be at the cost of something else going on in your body. So we want, you know, I, I always try and hit home this idea of abundance, abundance, abundance in your diet, not restriction, right? You can eat abundantly and still have a lean fit body um, right. if, if we're eating the right foods. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, um, it's funny because, you know, we, a lot, a lot of what we see here on the rehab perspective is just the idea of compensation, right? Everyone, everyone's heard that word. They, everyone has some kind of understanding, a base level understanding of your body compensates to do things like that and that there can be repercussions for compensation. But, you know, even like the analogy of the nutrition thing, just the, just how much that can cause problems down the road you know, is a, is a big deal. I kind of, one of the expressions I like to use in my patients with like pain or, you know, they ask me questions, well, how did I get here? Or why is it not better yet? Or things like that. It's like, you know, you've been, you're, you've been writing these checks and your body's been cashing them for a while. You know, you you didn't get here overnight. Um, And if this is, these are processes that we're trying to reverse and then change for the better. And I mean, it goes hand in hand again with the nutritional changes. Um, some of these, some of these things. I mean, again, you can probably speak, speak to this better than I can. But some of these things, even when you start these changes in your diet and your intake, because it is natural, you're not taking a drug. It takes a while to see. Um, just even with like rehabbing or getting out of pain or correcting a faulty movement pattern, you know, it's not going to happen in in like ten days. It, it's an investment. It's a journey. Totally. Uh, yeah, I think you nailed it um, when you said you know, start with just one thing. So, um, I'll, you, I like the analogy of how to boil a frog, you know, this yeah. Analogy. yeah. So, uh, you know, if you have a, a pot of boiling water and you throw the frog in there, he's just going to jump right out. Right. And this is what we do with our diets and exercise and everything. We try and go, we get all the information 
and we try and go all in on everything at once and we crash and burn. It's never going to work. Yeah. Um, but each of these things on their own has tremendous value and can be changing. So start with one. So how do you boil a frog? You put them in, you know, nice lukewarm water and you very, very slowly turn up the water. So it's again, right. so to vegetarians and vegans who are watching that I just, okay, so <laughs> I'm really gonna, yeah, I, I got to be more politically correct. I'm very terrible at it, but hey, look, it's life. It's cooking. Um, that's how it you gets the do concept it. across, though. Yeah, it does get the concept across, right? It's it's you you want to make the change so it's not overwhelming and not noticeable. Um, yeah. And this thing you know, you're you're in it, and and you kind of look back and say, how did I get here? Um, right. So and that's why I like simple rules, not and not necessarily getting crazy about counting the calories. It's like simple rules. For, for protein, protein with every meal, palm size portion, three meals a day, one or two protein snacks throughout the day, um, and bonus points if you can get like a protein shake in there, right? Do those things, and I guarantee you, if we go and do the math, you've at least hit the 75, 0.75 grams per pound of body weight, and now you're set exactly. up for success. Yeah. yeah. So why the um, why the calcium then? You know, I, it's just hard to talk about recovery. We're talking about like tissues and bones and all that, and not at least throw calcium out there because sure. obviously, you know, calcium is what's giving us structure to the bones. And then, so I actually have a list here. Uh, I guess fun facts, but people probably don't realize how critical calcium is for so many different processes. So. Calcium is going to help your blood vessels constrict and dilate, so it's good for your cardio fitness. It's going to help your muscles contract, so actually, you know, making you basically faster and stronger if you have adequate amounts. Um, helping with nerve transmission, so again, like speed, agility, strength. Um, your nervous, if we're talking to athletes, you know, it's not just the size of your muscle, it's the relationship to, of your nervous system to your muscles, mm -hmm. right? So we want that firing at an optimal level. Um, calcium's helping out with hormone secretion. So it's balancing your hormones, balancing your energy, balancing your recovery. Um, it also helps release glycogen, which is like your critical fuel. It's basically carbs in your body. Um, and so again, again, it gets into that thing. It's like, well, how can I eat so much protein if I got, if I need to eat this many carbs or whatever, somebody told me I need to eat so many carbs. And it's like how you use carbs makes a difference too. So hey, here's my other one. So two unpopular opinions in, in the fitness industry, quality matters and micronutrients matter. Okay. This is the, the two that everybody's going to poo poo when you get on Instagram and all that. <laughs> It's just because it's too difficult, it's too overwhelming to talk about, but it they do matter, right? So if you're, think about it, if you're using glycogen more efficiently, then you don't need as much of it, okay? I don't, and maybe it's just, maybe it's a minute amount, but maybe that minute amount is the difference between weight gain or whatever that thing is, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so calcium is going to help with blood clotting, so that's good with injuries, and it's going to also help uh, balance your pH in the body, so it's going to help, um, well, so, like, we, we now know that, like, muscular failure is related to how the acidity of your blood, right, or, or in your muscles, right, so right. Um, people think it's, like, lactic acid, but it's really about, uh, well, now it's going to get too science -y, but it's <laughs> yeah, about cause... right? buffering hydrogen ions so like when your muscles get too acidic you're pretty much not able to produce that energy anymore um, until they can chill out so you have more calcium among other you know supplements it, they'll delay that that time to fatigue essentially so right really important for athletes um, in performance and recovery yeah. um, and that's it's an easy one to get too so like um if, if you're good with dairy, if your stomach can tolerate it, it's a quart of milk, which I don't know. 
again, I'm kind of a bro, so that doesn't sound like a lot to me, <laughs> but, but maybe it is a lot. Uh, but don't forget your green leafy vegetables. So um, like spinach and kale, it's about five cups of spinach and kale, which that sounds like a lot, but you know, you cook that up and it's, it's not really so much and mix it in with your ground beef throw some sriracha on it and now we're we're doing awesome so yeah there we go yeah yeah so i mean that's you know that's a again super super simple change um easy to implement i mean the you know these four categories but i mean huge huge changes in your quality of life and again just your mood energy levels uh, and your performance you know again this is fueling for fitness so i i, just, I always try to relay it back to you know, day-to-day -day quality of life for people so that, you know, they're not, they're not always thinking like, well, this is just for people who perform sports, but, you know, it, it's for those people too. And also if you want to maximize your performance, I mean, you know, it's not always about um, the, the quality matters, right? Like you've been saying, mm -hmm. like people's training, you know, they do all this crazy high volume training. And then like, look, unless you're, you know, you're Rich Froning or whoever, you know, you're going to go win the CrossFit games or whatever, you're LeBron James. It's like, you don't need to be training this much volume. You need to be getting in good quality training. You need to move well, and right. you need to you need to be supplementing that training with a high quality diet. These these four things uh, you've right. outlined. You know, you're going to be in a much better place than you would have been before um, having done that. So, yeah, and when well, if you're a CrossFitter watching, you'll understand this. Um, like if you look at Rich Froning he moves really well yes right? so the quality is there and i'm sure with lebron james you know he what is not practicing you know throwing up bricks and doing trick shots. maybe steph curry like is just i feel like he just <laughs> and then like tries the craziest stuff he can do but like most of these guys are training quality repetition and so that way it's automatic on the court so yeah i mean to make that analogy you you start with quality um, and you're starting in a good place. I guess um, if, I, if I was gonna throw in kind of one other tip for inflammation, um, it would be to, well, okay, here's one that's non-negotiable, sugar, okay? We need to reduce the amount of sugar in our diet. Um, and then I would throw on top of that like grains. That would be something we'd want to just look at moderating um and essentially this all comes we call it here we call it the blood sugar roller coaster <laughs> and so essentially what happens is your body only wants so much sugar or glucose in your blood at a time it doesn't need it it's about like a three quarters of a teaspoon at any given time um and it's gonna help you feel energy it's you know your muscles will store some of this sugar as glycogen as carbs your liver will store some but you know if you chug uh let's say a can of coke or whatever and get 50 grams of uh sugar it's going to be significantly higher than what your body wants for homeostasis and so what happens is you get that burst of energy um but what, what's going to happen is your body's going to try and get to balance and, right. and it's not going to have, it's not going to know what to do, or it's not going to be able to use that sugar efficiently. It's going to put a little bit in your muscles, a little bit in your liver, but it's going to be a lot of excess. That excess is going straight to fat. Um, but it's also because your body has to release so much insulin to insulin is what's going to shuttle all that sugar and try and put it where it needs to go that's really inflammatory to your system that's you know we're talking about type 2 diabetes at, like using the extreme example i mean this is where like people are we're talking about people losing their feet and whatnot right so just to mm -hmm. see the effects of excess blood sugar and excess insulin in the body it it's inf it's inflammatory is damaging to tissues um right so trying to kind of dampen inflammation in our body and have a better recovery be less sore we'll, we might want to look at how much sugar and carbs you're getting 
um, and is that you know fueling the fire or is it fueling your fitness? I think there's a balance there. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, and again, same thing because you have your fitness, your your recovery from an injury. Um, you know, again, it's just gonna be super eye opening because it just is just as it's pretty easy to start implementing at least one of these things. It's also relatively easy to try to just start reducing maybe excessive or just even refined sugars um, mm-hmm. in your diet in ways that you maybe just didn't even realize you're getting them in. Um, you know, and at, at the end of the day, like you've already alluded to, Dennis, you know, it's, it's all about balance and enjoying, sure, your, you know, your diet and the things you eat, but just realizing it does have implications. You know, if you, again, I'm going to bring it back to like recovering from an injury or um, some kind of strain or pain or something like that. It's like, you know, if you've been dealing with this for a long period of time and you've done things like try to change the quality of your movement. Maybe you've changed the load of your workouts or the volume you're putting in during a week. You know, you've been working on ergonomics and body positioning and all those different things. And there still seems to be a problem in there. I mean, there could be a big part of that coming from diet changes that still haven't happened yet. Um, so bringing, you know, just bringing light and awareness to that is huge. Yeah. 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 And, and I think it can be overwhelming for people. Um, and so, you know, it's a shame because so one of the things we do here, we have the classroom um, and the demo kitchen. And so uh, under normal times, I'd be able to do like cooking demonstrations to kind of bring some of this to life because what needs to happen is we need to make eating as exciting as and flashy as working out and it can be i mean you can get into like there's some great you know cooking shows and stuff out there but unfortunately it's not always like the healthiest foods you know so yeah. like, uh, diners drive and dies like i love that show but <laughs> we can do the same thing but kind of highlight healthier meals um so yeah. hopefully we get back to that soon um but I guess what people need to know right now is I am here available for one-on-one coaching. Um, and in the context of talking, you know, one-on-one me focusing on you and your goals, it's much easier to just dial it in and give you just, you know, sort of bite-sized chunks of information that's easy for you to comprehend and digest and give you some actual items. So just in case, um, you know, you end up watching this and it's kind of like, uh, you know, I don't know what to do with this information. You know, I would just hope that what you took away from today is quality does matter. Um, you're probably not eating enough protein, probably eating too much sugar and carbs. Um, and we want to be intentional and and there's you know with a little bit of planning um and just a little bit of knowing where to look in the store for foods you can make some pretty significant changes um to your recovery and honestly you're going to see it in your physique um most people who i get eating more protein all they get more lean because remember proteins it's not just the repair but it's the build Right. And so people will talk about, I want to be tone. And what they're really saying is I want to build up some muscle and lose some fat. Right. And so, like we just said, we know that excess carbs are going to translate into fat storage. And we know that protein is going to translate into building tissues and muscle. So more protein, more building, less carbs, less fat. Right. And so it's kind of, I mean, it is kind of that easy. There is some balance and some nuance to it, depending on what your training regimen is and how mm-hmm. much you know fuel you actually need. But that's where we would just kind of talk one on one. That's not only is that a free service we provide by the store, we actually pay you. So if you sign up for our rewards program, that's uh, text organic to four one four one one, you'll actually get paid five dollars to do a one on one with me so hey i mean you can't beat that um and in fact if you're watching this today uh we'll put it in the comments i i need to sort of figure it out but we want to provide a coupon for for viewing this today as well that'd be awesome yeah and by the way it's burger month here so you know if you're trying to eat more ground beef you know we've got all kinds of cool recipes and deals going on so yeah 
Uh, there's like a cherry. Uh, it's a bison burger with like a cherry. Uh, what's it called? Oh, it looks amazing anyway. Oh, uh, that sounds that incredible. Yeah, yeah. We got the avocado burger, all kinds of good stuff going on. Man. But yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, Dennis, um, that's amazing. And, you know, everyone watching again, you know, use, use Dennis's resource. You know, I mean, the, the things there were, the point of this was to set people up to succeed and, you know, make your next, um, your next step an achievable realistic one to do um, hopefully in the future you know if we, if we get enough positive feedback from this maybe we can even have one that highlights like actual evidence base or like uh, efficient supplement um, regimen or things like that and you know do a couple of categories but you know we can even make it question informed um, but like Dennis said you know we're gonna we'll include uh, contact information for himself um, we can also make sure that someone can reach out to me too if they have any questions um, but your rehab related, recovery related um, from a physical uh, and treatment standpoint as well. That's a compliment kind of on both fronts. Um, and I just want to thank you uh, again, Dennis, for sure, just for your time today. Thank Natural Grocers and anyone for doing this. Um, we love cl collaborating and kind of partnering with people around the Kansas City, Missouri area and just uh, bring, in, bring in people, bring in our clients like the very best uh, resources and care and advice and counseling that we can possibly do. So thank you for that. Thank you, Nate. Yes, excellent. And uh, best luck to you and your clients. And by all means, if any if anyone needs help, uh, whether it's for recovery or for performance, I'm here. So I'd, I'd love to chat. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm going to be throwing your name out there for sure. Thank you so much. All right, Me Dennis. Too. I actually have somebody who's, who should be calling you later today, by the way, so he needs some help. Okay, well, great. I look forward to meeting him. So I'm, I'm uh, going to get him on cod liver oil, too, at the same time. Yeah, cod liver oil, uh, teaspoon a day. Well, follow, follow what's on the label. <laughs> Vitamin D, right? 4,000 IUs, calcium. Uh, oh, so for young athletes, I want to throw this out there. 1,200 milligrams of calcium per day is what's recommended. And then protein, uh, striving for up to a gram of protein per body weight per day. So there you go. We got this, guys. We can do this together. That's it. One right, thing at a time. Man. One thing at a time. Absolutely. Right. Well, you have a great rest of your day, man. I appreciate you. You too. Take care. Bye. All right.